I am about to do probably the craziest thing I've ever done on this YouTube channel. I am going to see how long it takes me to completely fill up my museum in Dinkum, starting on a brand new save file. That includes 35 fish, 44 bugs, and 19 sea creatures. Altogether, that is a total of 98 things I have to donate. We'll be going through each season, one by one, catching everything there is to catch in that season. Starting in summer, and once we've caught everything in summer, we'll just hibernate until autumn and so on. We'll continue this process until we've achieved 100% completion with the museum. While there are certain fish, bugs, and sea creatures that can be caught in multiple seasons, I am going to try to get those in the first season they become available. So come along with me on this epic journey and let's get started. As mentioned, we will be doing this challenge on a brand new island. So the first thing I had to do was create my character. Bug the Bounty Hunter from Museum Mayhem. My goal is to finish the tutorial phase as fast as possible and progress far enough into the story to unlock Theodore, you know, the museum guy. Other than that, I won't be doing anything else for the story, which in a way makes it a lot more challenging on myself because I won't be talking to the other NPCs like Franklin, for example, so I won't have access to any vehicles other than a robo. After completing a couple missions for Fletch, I get my bug catching net and I catch my first creature, a blue moon butterfly with its wings so big and bright. It's like a disco party in flight. And yeah, one down and about 97 more things to go. Yay. Since it will be some time until we get the museum, I'll find a cozy spot on the island to store all my donations so that it'll be ready for when we do have the museum. After doing that, I proceeded to catch this little booger, a fly. And then I found a grass yellow butterfly. It's like a little piece of sunshine, except it doesn't pay rent and just flies around all day. After that, I found a larigay, which looks like a little shield bug. Then I found a scarlet Jezebel butterfly. And this little dude is like a ninja with wings. After that, I found a funnel web spider. These guys are usually found in the bushlands. Then I found a Ulysses butterfly butterfly, which is a very stunning butterfly. It made me feel blue in the best way possible. Keep in mind that I also caught plenty of duplicates along the way. On the second day of summer, I met John the shopkeeper, once again, for like the third time now, and Fletch tells me all about licenses. We won't be using most of these licenses for this playthrough, other than the fishing license, which, you know, I got that first. We'll also need a mining license so that we can catch the deep fish and the glow bug, which are only found deep in the mine. Plus, we'll need to get a lodging license to get materials for certain missions. After getting the fishing license, I went to John's tent to purchase the fishing rod. Then I began fishing. I thought, you know, since yesterday was kind of a bug day, why not make this a fishing day? The first catch of the day was a blue spot flathead. I was feeling very spotty after that catch. Next, I caught a jungle perch, the only fish with a jungle gym built into its name. Then I found a carp, which at first I thought was just a really big goldfish. And I was really knocking these fishies out one by one and I still had plenty of time left in the day to catch more fish. Later on, I found a Baraku Grunter, and I wonder why they call it that. Does it grunt while it works out at Larry's gym? Next, I found a river bass, and river basses, they're pretty cool. These little dudes can be found in the rivers and the mangroves during pretty much any time. After that, I caught a blue fish. There you go. Oh, what? This one's a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. And I gotta say, what an original name. It doesn't get any more creative than Bluefish. Then I caught a Goatfish, and let me tell you, that catch was the greatest of all time. Pun intended. The Goatfish can be found in the ocean, pretty much any time. After that, I caught an Eel-Tailed Catfish, which is kind of like a hybrid between an eel and a fish. I think it's more of a fish than an eel. These little dudes are found in the mangroves. Later on during that day, I caught the Mangrove Jack, and this fish was literally no joke. I think I might have pulled a muscle just trying to reel it in. Now you can probably guess where this fish comes from. The name kind of gives it away. First two days down the books. And I'd say I put a pretty big dent into this challenge. My total catches so far were nine fish and seven bugs and zero sea creatures. We won't worry about the sea creatures until we get the fishing license level two. That way it'll be easier since you'll be able to see their little bubbles in the water. On the third day of summer, I progressed a little bit more into the story and bought a table saw. Then I gathered some materials and I crafted a crude furnace. After that, I caught a new bug, a harlequin butterfly. Before I 
knew how to pronounce it correctly, I was calling it the Harley Quinn butterfly, which I think sounds a lot cooler. After catching the Harlequin butterfly, I found two more new fishies, the bony tongue and the turpin. Both of these fishies can be found in the billabongs during any time, any season. I also caught a ton of extra river basses along the way. On the fourth day of summer, Fletch gives me the deed for John's shop, and my next mission is to collect the materials I needed to build it. And that's when I realized I can't get wood without a lodging license, so you know I had to get one of those. And after that I went to John's tent to buy an axe, and then I gathered all the materials for the shop and placed them inside the box. Now it's time to work on our Critterpedia some more. I spotted a beehive, and knew I had not caught a bee yet. I attacked that beehive with my sword. Kids, please don't do this at home and the bee was like buzz buzz motherfucker and then the queen was like bow down to your queen bitches after catching the bees i then later found dory the eye stripe surgeon fish and generally that fish is found in the ocean during the daytime Later on, I found the Tau Emerald Dragonfly, and these little dudes are fast. They're in the bushlands, and typically see them throughout the day. On the fifth day of summer, I woke up bright and early and sold all my extra fishies. Then I was on the hunt for some more bugs. I found the Peacock Spider. This bug is so colorful and flashy, it's like a little disco ball with legs. And later that day, I was wandering around in the tropics, and then I found a swallowtail butterfly. Uh, this little dude was slicing through the air like nobody's business. I almost felt bad for interrupting its airborne acrobats. But hey, I'm the one with the bug net here. On the sixth day of summer, my goal was to catch a painted lady butterfly, which is typically located in the pine forest during the morning and the daytime. I got a vehicle license level one and I made a robo. John's shop was finally built. And funny story, actually, he was a half hour late for work. I guess, you know, when you run the place, you can just work whenever you want, like a boss. And after I crafted my robo, I traveled to the pine forest. Aha, I think I might have just found the painted butterfly. It is a butterfly. No, don't get away. Oh, no. It better not get away from me. I finally caught my painted lady butterfly. Mission accomplished. My next objective was to find the lace wing which shouldn't take too long to find because they're also found in the pine forest, but you can find them in the plains too. After accomplishing my goals for the day, I headed back to my home base and upgraded my fishing license to level two and made a copper fishing rod. I still had some time left in the day, so I decided to take the rowboat out again to see what else I could find. And that's when I started looking for sea creatures. Some of the sea creatures I found was a blue mussel, and then I found a spiny sea urchin, which looked like a freaking porcupine that went for a swim. And after that, I found a tiger prawn. These sea creatures are so common and can be seen all over the ocean, anytime, any season. On the seventh day of summer, Theodore finally visits my island. It's about time. And that means I get to donate all the things that I've been hoarding. After doing that, my goal is to try to get the museum deed. So I spent the rest of the day collecting materials to build the museum. On the eighth day of summer, I was still working on collecting museum materials. My goal for that day was to look for more sea creatures during the morning and the daytime. And then once night comes around, I'll look for more bugs. My first sea creature that I caught that day was a white yabby. I found it in the river. This little dude's like a ghost shrimp or something. Then I found a purple model crab in the ocean. It literally looked like a walking grape. Soon after that, I found a biscuit sea star and a king prawn. Then I found a pink sea urchin, and that looked like spiky cotton candy. Later on, I found a bay bug, and you can find all these sea creatures pretty much everywhere, anytime, any season. After catching sea creatures, it was getting dark, so I thought I better start looking for some bugs. Because I hadn't really gone bug hunting at night yet, so there must be a ton of new bugs I hadn't caught. I first spotted a cricket and a black cricket, and I caught both of them. After that, I saw a bugan moth, or as I like to call it, the bong moth. Off. They fly around all night, then they crash during the day. I bet they're totally ripped on moth weed or something. They're pretty cool. They're like the party animals of the bug kingdom. 
Later that night, I caught a centipede and a cockroach. And I think the last time I saw a cockroach, I was inside my Animal Crossing house. Then I found a firefly and I named him Sparky. He's like a living glow stick. We could start a rave together in my backyard. What do you say, Sparky? All these bugs I caught at night are pretty common. They're like all over the place in every biome, every season. On the ninth day of summer, Clover came to my island, but we don't need her for this playthrough. I did buy a pink hat though, because you know, tough guys wear pink. Then I went to John's shop to purchase a stone grinder to make concrete. It was the last material I needed to finish building my museum. After that, I started looking for more sea creatures and I found a regular Yabby. Then I found more sea creatures like the freshwater mussel, the freshwater prom, and an inland crab. All these are found in the rivers anytime, any season. After spending the day looking for sea creatures, I figured I better do some fishing because there were still some fish I needed that only came out at night. So I traveled out to the ocean and began looking for the barracuda and the stingray. It took me a little while to find them because they're pretty rare and it's kind of hard to see them at night unless you have like a torch or a candle hat. I first caught the barracuda and barracudas, well, they're pretty gnarly. They're like a mini jaws or something. They're also worth a good bit of money. So if you're ever in a need of dinks, you can get like 16K per barracuda. After finding the barracuda, I finally found the stingray. Come on, take my bait. This one's gonna be a little bit hard to catch, but we got it. Come on, stingray. Woo, yeah. They look like pancakes with a stinger. On the 10th day of summer, my goal for the day was to find my last two sea creatures, the 11 arm star and the mud crab. So I went to the tropics to look for them and I got myself into a situation where my rowboat sank and then I glitched out and drowned. I had barely started the day too, so just my luck. On the 11th day of summer, I donated my sea creatures to the museum and then I sold some more extras to John and then I went back to the tropics once again to try to find that 11 arm sea star and anything else that I could find. I was investigating bubbles all day long and I had no luck that day either. On the 12th day of summer, I finally found my 11 arm sea star and it looked like a starfish on steroids. I found mine in the Northern Ocean, but they can also be seen in the Southern Ocean. On the 13th day of summer, my goal was to find the mud crab, which can be found anytime in the rivers. So that's where I went. I searched pretty much every single river I could find and I finally found the mud crab. It was on like some mud stairs and it blended in so well on the stairs. So it was kind of hard to spot. On the 14th day of summer, I had three objectives for that day. Catch a red back spider, catch a boot head catfish, and catch a short fin eel. And before heading out to do that, I donated some more things to the museum, and then I was off to look for that spider. I went to the desert and I started looking. Moments later, I spotted him. And would you look at that bright red marking on his back? It's like a warning sign saying, back off or I'll bite you. Come to daddy. There we go. Yes. Now it's time to look for that boot head catfish and that short fin eel. Both these fish can be found at night. So I waited for nightfall and I went to the billabongs to find the short fin eel. The short fin eel was pretty easy to spot. Since you know it is an eel, it stands out from the other fishies. After catching the short fin eel, I then went to the mangroves and then I caught the boot head catfish. On the 15th day of summer, I felt like it was time to work on my mining skill so that I can get a level two mining license and unlock deep in the mines. So you know what I did that day? I spent the entire day just hitting rocks with my trusty pickaxe. I know, real exciting, right? On the 16th day of summer, I purchased the level two mining license and the deep mining license. Soon I'll be going into the mine to look for that deep fish and the glow bug. But today's mission is to look for that purple azure butterfly and the pigment fly. I first went to the pine forest to look for the purple azure butterfly. It shows up there during the morning and also the daytime. It took me a little bit to find it, but I finally did. 
I had bush devils chasing after me. I was basically risking my life for this little purple butterfly. And I gotta say, it's such a beautiful creature. I bet it poops out glitter. My next mission was to find the pigment fly, which can be found in the desert or in the plains. I decided to search the desert first, and I had no luck there. So I went to the plains, and I had much better luck. And that's where I caught it. On the 17th day of summer, I decided to take a little break from the critter pedia grind and worked on gathering all the materials needed to build the deep mine. Once I gathered the materials, I slept until the next day. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and sleep two days in a row. All right, so day 19, the deep mine is finally here and we need to get the glow bug and the deep fish. Now, this is gonna be a challenge since I don't have a candle hat. I don't really have good weapons, just a wooden bat. But you know, that's how I like it. I like a good challenge. I first started looking for the glow bug and I figured that would be the easier one of the two. They're pretty easy to spot. I mean, you can kind of just find them just by wandering around in the mines. So it didn't really take me too long to find it. Next, I started looking for the deep fish, and my strategy for this was to just find bodies of water and, you know, just kind of look inside of them. There he is, right there. Come on. Now, this was a little challenging because I had to fight off crocodiles and bats. They like kept interrupting me as I was trying to fish for the glowfish. I think that stupid bat like hit me. So it took me a couple tries, but I finally caught that little freaky fish with the light up noggin. Oh yeah. Woo, would you look at that? After catching the D fish, that brings us to a total of 17 out of 35 fish, 25 out of 44 bugs, 15 out of 19 sea creatures. So now it's time to hibernate until the next season. Today marks the first day of autumn. Yay! I started the month off by catching this little stinker, a stink bug. They're all over the place sticking up your island. After that, I found a fiddler's beetle in the bushlands. Then I started fishing in the rivers and I caught three new fishies, the barramundi, silver perch, and a grayling. After fishing in the rivers, I decided to head off to the ocean. And that's where I caught another two fishies, the black and white snapper, and the Travelia. Once nighttime came around, I caught an anchovy in the southern part of the ocean. And anchovies are pretty easy to spot because they are so small, they stand out from the other fishies. On the second day of autumn, I purchased the fish book, which is going to make the rest of this challenge a lot easier on me. In case you did not know, the fish book and the bug book are items that you can purchase at the museum after you've donated a combined total of 45 fish and bugs. Critters do not count. And the fish book, well, it's pretty cool. It shows each fish in the water and tells you what they sell for. And if there's a fish that you haven't caught yet, it'll have like this little question mark above it. So now we just gotta look for question marks and we can find the rest of the things that we need pretty easily. After acquiring the fish book, I started fishing at the mangroves and that's where I caught the mouth almighty. I wonder if it's got a big mouth. On the third day of autumn, I woke up bright and early, like I do every morning, and then I bought the bug book, which does the same thing the fish book does, but you know, it's for bugs. Then I went to the plains and I caught a meadow Katie did. I also upgraded my fishing license to level three, and later that day I found a common blue tail. Typically you'll see these around the pine forest or in the tropics. After that, I waited until dark and I started fishing and I caught a yellow fin tuna. Don't swim away from me. What are you doing? There he comes. He's coming. He turned around. Oh no, we got this other fish coming up too. No, I don't want the other fish. No, why are you gonna be like that, bro? Don't need you. There we go. This fish is gonna be really feisty. Come on, almost got him. Yes. That thing is gorgeous. On the fourth day of autumn, my next goal was to find a bird wing butterfly, which can only be found in the morning at the tropics. But instead, I found a desert scorpion, a rhinoceros beetle, and a huntsman. I ain't even mad. After searching all day long, I decided to bring my sleeping bag and sleep under the stars in the tropics. That way I can get a jump start in the morning and wouldn't have to travel so far to get that bird wing butterfly. On the fifth day of autumn, I was still looking for that bird wing butterfly. I was going to each tropical island one by one on foot. I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be nice if I had a glider or something? And after some time searching, I finally found it. That's it right over there. Thank goodness. I was starting to doubt myself. I did not think I'd be able to find it. Oh man. 
That's pretty awesome. Our next goal is to travel to the Southern Ocean and look for the Marlin. I get inside my rowboat and I'm off. And that's when I spotted the Marlin. That's our bad boy right there. He's like circling around my boat. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, come on. Woo, yeah, look at that pretty thing. Now all I need is some tartar sauce and I'm set. After catching the marlin, I waited until dark to search for some bugs that we needed. Our goals were to find the tiger moth and the trogig. I first saw the tiger moth at the plains, and you can tell the tiger moth doesn't give a shit about rules. He's like the punk rock rebel of the insect world. He's pretty cool. And not too far from there, I caught the trogate in the desert. On the sixth day of autumn, the goal was to catch our last two bugs for the season, which was the paper wasp and the dust hawker dragonfly. Now you can find the paper wasp in the desert or in the plains. And the dust hawker dragonfly is found in the pine forest or the tropics in the morning. Since I woke up in the desert, we're going to look for the paper wasp first. After searching for some time in the desert, I didn't really have much luck there. So I headed off to the plains. And moments later, we found the paper wasp. It's buzzing all the way over here. <laughs> Glorious. Don't sting me. <laughs> Woo, yes. After catching the paper wasp, I decided to travel to the pine forest on my rowboat. And the plan was to camp out there so I can get a head start in the morning using the same strategy we used to catch the bird wing butterfly cause it did work pretty good. While I was at the pine forest that night, I did manage to catch a new fish called the blobfish, a fish with a face only a mother could love. On the seventh day of autumn, we looked for the dust hawker dragonfly and the black sea cucumber, which were the last two things I needed for the season. And and unfortunately, we did not find either that day. On the eighth day of autumn, I wasn't having much luck searching for the dust hawker dragonfly in the pine forest, so I decided to look at the tropics, since it's another place where you can find the dust hawker dragonfly. But that day was cut short because a shark ate me. On the ninth day of autumn, I woke up in the tropics once again, and what's crazy is that a minute later, we found exactly what we were looking for. Wait, is this it right over here? Is this the dragonfly? It's gotta be it. it. Has a bunch of question marks on it. Come, come on! Slow down. Yes, we did it. Now the last thing that we need for autumn is that black sea cucumber. And you would think this would be an easy task because it literally looks like a black log in the water. But it wasn't that easy for me. I spent the next couple days searching for it, looking at rivers, the southern ocean, and also the northern ocean, and I was starting to lose hope. But on the 12th day of autumn, I finally found the black sea cucumber. Uh, are you serious? Slimy, squishy, and kinda looks like a turd. And that brings us to a total of 27 out of 35 fish, 37 out of 44 bugs, and 16 out of 19 sea creatures. I'd say we did pretty good for autumn. On the first day of winter, I was kind of just wandering around with my fish and bug book to see if I could find any question marks. I figured that was a pretty good strategy. Moments later, I found my first question mark, and it was in the ocean. It was abandoned Morwong. Next, I found a garfish in the ocean, and then I found a galaxia down by the river. After that, I went to the tropics to try and find the Ludric, and I found two of them right beside each other. I didn't know they traveled together. After catching the Ludric, we only needed one more fish for the season, and that was the murray cod, and that's found in the morning. In the meantime, we still have some bugs that we need to catch, and one sea creature. I was gonna look for them later that night, but I got knocked out by this giant bird, cause, you know, I kind of forgot to pause the game and went AFK for a moment. On the second day of winter, I woke up bright and early to search for that murray cod. The murray cod is found in the rivers. It didn't take me too long to find it. It was a pretty easy catch. Woo, we got him, yeah. After finding the murray cod, our next mission was to find the Hercules moth, which can only be found at night. Now, the thing about the Hercules moth is you can find it in any location at night, so it literally could be anywhere on the island. I first searched the bushlands and had no luck there. Then I went to the pine forest and there it was. Aha, is that it? That's gotta be it right there. Question marks, baby. Let's go. Looks like Hercules finally found his wingman. 
The next bug that I needed was the Goliath stick, which can be found in the pine forest or in the tropics in the morning. Obviously, when you don't have any vehicles other than a rowboat, you probably wouldn't have the time to check both places in one day. So it's kind of a gamble on which one to pick. I figured since we're already in the pine forest, we might as well camp out there and search for the Goliath stick in the morning. On the third day of winter, I woke up in the pine forest and started looking for that Goliath stick. And it turns out I made the right decision by staying there. No way, is that it? You're kidding me. Already? Nice. Goliath stick, baby. Let's go! Moving on to the fourth day of winter. All we have left for winter is to catch one sea creature, the beloved blue sea slug, which is only found at night. And surprisingly, it didn't take me that long to find it. I probably got lucky. I was just casually swimming near bubbles in the tropics, and that's where I discovered it. Is that it? Right there? That looks kind of bluish. Oh, where'd it go? I can't see. I gotta follow the bubbles. B blue sea slug, right here. Catch. Which brings us to a total of 32 out of 35 fish, 39 out of 44 bugs, and 17 out of 19 sea creatures. Winter was by far the easiest season, but wait until you hear about spring, cause spring threw a huge curveball at me. On the first day of spring, I caught the monarch butterfly, and then I found the ladybird. Then I started fishing and I caught a blackfish and a golden perch. Next, I found a grasshopper doing his little hippity hop. Then I found the stag beetle. It's a cute little stag beetle. Oh, I don't want him to like vanish into the wall. All right, let's get him. Oh God, why am I so bad? <laughs> yes. Stag beetle, let's go. On the second day of spring, my goal was to catch the emperor dragonfly, which can be found in the tropics and also the plains. Ah, oh, there it is, right over here. The emperor dragonfly. All right, let's catch it. Come on, come on. Oh. Yes! I was very excited when I finally caught it. It was like seeing a shiny Pokemon. I was pretty pumped. Now we've completed all the bugs, and my next mission was to find our last two sea creatures, the purple sea urchin and the cushioned sea star. So I spent the rest of the day searching the ocean. I started out in the northern ocean, and that's where I found the cushioned sea star. I found it by some steps by the shore. Then I spent the rest of the night looking for the purple sea urchin, but I had no luck. On the third day of spring, I was still investigating every bubble that I could find, going from bubble to bubble. And that's when I spotted the purple sea urchin. Is that it? That's a sea urchin right over here. That kind of looks like a purple sea urchin. Come on, please be it. There's my purple porcupine right there, which brings us to a total of 19 out of 19 sea creatures, 44 out of 44 bugs, and wait, what's this? We have 34 out of 35 fish. Apparently it's not over yet. And that's when I noticed I was missing a fish. Are you serious? How did I miss a fish? Oh man. Now I had to figure out which fish was I missing. Okay, I am missing the Saratoga, which can be found in the billabong at night during summer. Thankfully, summer is only one season away, so I had to hibernate once again to summer year two. After waking up from hibernation, I waited until it was dark out, and that's when I went to the billabong. I checked like four different billabongs, and that's when I finally found my last floating question mark. Oh, let's go. Yes! Woohoo! Since I caught the Saratoga kind of late, the museum was closed, so I had to donate it the next day. And after donating everything to the museum, I was slightly disappointed that there wasn't a trophy or a special item for completing the museum. Oh well, it's still pretty cool though. I felt really accomplished and fulfilled, plus I had a lot of fun in the process. I did notice, after looking at all the exhibits in the museum, that there was an empty exhibit. So who knows, maybe there will be more things to donate in a future update. Because currently as I'm filming this video, Dinkum is still in early access. So if there happens to be an update with more fish, bugs, and sea creatures, you better believe that I'll be back for a part two. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more content if, you know, you vibe with it. I'll see you later.